Hey, hello everyone, my name is Sin, and welcome back. For today's video, I've got for you my recommendations on how to make currency and how to progress at a decent pace on SSF, where you have a lot more limited resources, you need to farm a lot more for yourself without getting the luck of dropping, say, an eternity and suddenly your league is made, right? You have all the currency you need for you to get your build to a comfortable spot where you don't have to think about anything else. In SSF it's a lot more evolved and this is what we are going to be talking about today. Specifically, what trade decks I would recommend for what situations in SSF. So, coming here to the trade deck you can see what I'm running right now, and I'm gonna start with this one. This deck focuses entirely on a character that has just reached maps. It has nothing, and you're trying to develop it and getting it off the ground as quickly as possible. For that, there's things here that are, I would say, are kind of mandatory. One, you need to go into Black Sail. It's very important to get a good set of both relics and memories as soon as possible. Especially if you're trying to farm unique ones, then it's much more easy to do this this way. The new leak mechanic also helps with that, of course, keep that in mind. But I would say it's very important to go into Black Sail. And usually I always go with one of the choices here. It doesn't really matter which, whichever you prefer. Personally, I always go for wealth. This increases the quantity of items that are going to drop from it. And the base one is just increased chance, so it's very, very important. The second thing that you also really need when you're getting a character off the ground is slates for your cube mechanic, right? So immediately I would say take the base one for spawn cube of malice. Secondly, I would always recommend uh, increased chance to get a desire incarnation. I think that's very important because these drop a lot of beads and crystals and this allows you to roll more in the end and also get more materials to roll outside of the mechanic in town if you need to. The third one that I would recommend is design incarnations have a chance to drop additional divine slates. You're here to farm slates otherwise you'd go much much deeper in investing into cube. We just want to be here for farming as many slides as possible, try to, to set up our cube as quickly as possible to get our character up and running, right? So this is why I would go with this. Other than that, personally, I almost always on SSF recommend going into the three flame sand cards here. They're very important, unless you're trying to farm a bunch of rare items you're looking for a specific mod, in which case you can probably drop this one and just go with the first two. Don't turn your rare gear into flame sand, but otherwise, if you're just going, just playing the game naturally, you're gonna drop rare uh, items anyway with tier one suffixes and prefixes. So I think this is always valuable, but you can, you can make an argument to not use this one. Otherwise, the other two are always a stay in, in my opinion. You're always going to need flame sand. You're always going to be crafting new, new, new items, right? So, this is what I would recommend. Zeal is quite good, just more monsters equals more loot, right? We all know this. So, uh, it's not mandatory. If you're going deep into a specific mechanic, Zeal can be dropped for something else. And I would say this league in particular, because of the league mechanic of Nightmare, I've been a really big fan of God of War. I think it's phenomenal for how it interacts with the league mechanic. It just gives us all the monsters from the league mechanic also get included in the God of War mechanic, which means you have a much easier time getting up to those higher levels and a much easier time just clearing through the map and gaining like chain effects between the monsters because the density is just way bigger these days, right? So I have been playing God of War almost since the start of the league, really. And I take here the Desire Conquest because it just gives us baseline chance for it to appear. I'm taking uh, Honest because 
the character I'm playing currently just got two maps, it's not really set up correctly, it doesn't have a lot of damage, so this allows us to get to those further levels. Eventually I'll drop this for something else that I'll speak in a second. And finally I have Brave Conquest, chance to be attacked by God of War followers. These seem to drop specific bases that are quite unique, so I've been running this for a little bit to see those bases because I didn't know what they were, but I actually would rather drop this for Righteous, which means whenever we finish God of War we get a bunch more quantity per trial that we have, or per level of the trial that we achieved, right? And once my damage and gear is a little bit better on this character, I'll also drop Honest and go for Proud instead. Allows us to go even further on the mechanic to up to 15 levels, if I'm correct. So this would be my You Just Got Maps Get Farming deck. Here we have what I would consider a boss rushing deck. This is 11 out of 12, and realistically, you can drop Zeal as well, it doesn't really matter. For the, um, in fact, you can drop Zeal and the Tree Flame Sand if you want. It doesn't matter for the um, strategy that we're using here. And as I was saying, this is my boss rushing uh, setup for the deck. I go with both Pity to try and get an additional tension point and Rational. This means we don't get any of the cards at the beginning of a cycle of mapping. However, all of your maps essentially give you twice as many attention points. This is the folk roll bit for our boss version, right? I then take triple God of War here for chance, for more floors and duration, because we don't really care about the loot here, and I'll explain why on this one exactly. This card makes so we have basically no loot from the God of War mechanic. However, we have a 35% chance for one additional rank of, um, or one additional rank five beacon to drop from the mechanic. This can only be done on time arc seven and above, so keep that in mind. But this is, this exact deck, in fact, is what I used for farming six, I want to say, six fights of travel rate so far because you can much more easily sustain tier rates and get to those watchers much quicker kill them repeat get, get the drops from them which normally drop two or three beacons anyway for tier 8 maps and you still getting the tier 8 drops from the maps as well when you get the god of war there's a much higher chance to get one, maybe two if you drop one along the map, maybe three even if you're very lucky. So this is what I would recommend for my boss rushing strategy. Finally here we have our Eterna, Ruins of Eterna deck. As you can see we take quite a few of the cards from it, so let's go through them. In fact, let's go first through everything else. We still have the God of War mechanic. If you don't like God of War in any of these, that's fine, you can swap that for God of Machines, God of the Hunt, which is also very good and non-intrusive. In particular, God of the Hunt would look like something like this, if I swap this here in a second. I would recommend going in just the base chance, right? I would go into the currency version of it and just... Um, the chance to the boss buff be replaced with drop quantity and I think these three on their own give you a lot of value so if you'd ra rather go into goddess of the hunting you can do that and I think it's nearly as good but god of war right now is gains a lot of value from the nightmare mechanic as I've said before so I still personally prefer god of war the three sands, as I said, you're always in need of flame sand. And for zeal here as well, as I mentioned, this is not necessary for any of these, it's just additional density on your maps. For the Eterna mechanic, why would you go into this? Well, one, there's a lot of power to be gained on your candles, and 
they don't just drop if you don't go and do the mechanic, right? You can't drop them doing maps. So you need to get your invites that you get from the mobs in the map to be able to then go and talk to the lady in the town to teleport you to the city of Eterna where you can start progressing your passive tree for the city of Eterna as well as getting your candles and starting gaining a lot of power from that. So just base chance to get a group of kin of Eterna which are the mobs that have a chance to drop you the invitations. This is further chance, right? It's another group of mobs at 30%, so very good. This, I think, is very valuable. You can drop it because technically you don't need the pages to access the city. However, you're going to need a lot of pages to progress through that passive tree and starting to farm specific candles that you want. So I would very much recommend this, at the very least, until you unlock the slots for blocking certain candle affixes that you do not want. And next you have 11% chance for a Blade of Eternal Obsession. This is the guy that is considered a boss. It is very tough, it hits very hard, so be careful if you're doing this on hardcore. He's a very tough mob, in the damage it does at least. And when you kill him, you get a guaranteed ch drop of the invitation. So this is why he's here. Every time you see him, you're guaranteed to get at least one drop of it. And then we use selfless because this gives us a um, chance to get twice as many of the drops that we just mentioned. So quite useful. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. These are the decks that I've been using since the start of the league. I've been swapping them in and out depending on my needs as the league progresses. Keep in mind, if you're an SSF, you're going to be needing to swap your deck. You can't just sit on one, make a ton of currency, but then, you know, you don't have candles or you don't have slates and you can't just use the currency that you farm to go and buy them on the auction house, right? It doesn't work like that. So keep in mind, you're going to be a lot more active with your deck to get the full experience out of SSF. And I think it's a great experience. So I hope this helped you guys. If it did, please leave a like and a follow on the channel. That helps us out grow and get us out to more people. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.